I Matchbox, and today I will watch Ronan Liberty. I think that's an update, some kind of update that we are gonna try to react to. I have my tea, I have my problems with microphone because it, uh, the stand for it just today decided to broke off. And yeah, I'm gonna work with that. Okay, let's do this. What's up, gamers? Welcome to Tico Talks Throne in Liberty. Hi. My name's Tico, and I'm the globalization design manager at Amazon Games for Throne in Liberty. And I'm here to give you some updates on the game and a little peek at what's coming soon. Okay. I've been spending a ton of time in the game, having a blast with all of you. And now that we just released our Haunted Harvest Halloween update, I'm even more excited. I hope everyone has had a chance to check out the event. The limited Yes, we did, and I quite enjoying one of the reasons I'm enjoying uh, that it is not such a chore uh, to do as usual cop co dungeons because there's no way to fail it. There's no way to anger other people if I fail. Uh, I, uh, I met one bug. I didn't film that, so I have no proof, but the bug was that I uh, spawn or uh, I died on the point where uh, spawn point was and I need to cling with grappling with uh, uh, to to something that I don't see what uh, that's probably if I remember correctly that's I think a pumpkin in the air I need to cling to that with the grappling hook and shimmy myself to 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 uh, the arena for uh, Mm. I think that is a uh, mid boss, uh, small boss uh, of the uh, of the event, and for me that didn't exist. I spawned and I can't grapple to anything. I mean, the grappling function doesn't ex uh, doesn't exist for me at that point. I saw everybody clinging to that. To me, nope, nothing there. So that's, uh, what was that? Overall, I'm enjoying, I'm buying stuff for, 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 uh, for, for currency, for pumpkin currency that I have. So let's Mid -time go. Time Haunted Labyrinth Dungeon is so fun. And I love seeing all the clever things people are doing with their outfits to get in the festive mood. Let's talk a bit about how things have been going and what we're planning in the coming months. First, I want to give a huge thank you to the millions of players that have joined us so far on this journey. We wanted to make sure that crossplay was enabled from day one, and it's been awesome to see that investment pay off. This great community has grown so quickly in this first month, and we're just getting started. Of course, any game launch of this magnitude has lots of craziness that comes with it. We've been in constant contact with NCSoft to address player feedback, and we hope you've seen some of that in the last few weeks. So let's talk more about how we're moving forward. Let's start with a topic we all hate, and every MMO deals with. Bots. bots. The battle against bots is well underway, and I want to tell you a bit about what we're doing. Bot trains, I've met them myself. Oh, <laughs> bots, 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 bots. Every MMO has one, it has those, but not so blatantly in the open. Trains of bots running around like a fucking snake to attack bots on multiple fronts. First, we're continuing to improve. That helps me to relax, brushing my beard, my nasty beard, and I still love it. That's helped me to relax. Improve our detection algorithms and are now running those daily to ban bots as quickly as possible. Is there any report system? I need to check that out. Maybe I could film when I meet Train of bots, maybe I won't meet them anymore, but, but. Second, we're attacking the areas in which bots can operate and continuing to look for ways to make it difficult for bots to do business. But we wanna do that while minimizing the impact to real player experience. We have some plans related to the auction house to impose protections to limit bots impact there. We will share more on that once we are able, but can't reveal too much detail that could be used to circumvent our safeguards. Third, we're actively actioning players who engage in RMT behavior. Participating in RMT negatively impacts several aspects of the game. Only 
RM, uh, RMT that I can imagine in this game, I think would be the same as the Lost Ark. Uh, you pay money for going through the dungeon. No? Maybe? Co-op dungeon, exactly. How else? Don't know. Not sure. Including empowering bot activity, compromising the hard work of players who follow the rules, and more. We will continue to action players with more severe punishments as appropriate, including negative lucent balances, full auction house lockouts, suspensions, and bans, as we have zero tolerance for this type of behavior. The next thing I want to talk to you about is world bosses, which are garnering a lot of discussion in the community. So I want to take some time to discuss that. Oh. First, let's talk about loot drops. Many of you have been feeling that world bosses have often left you feeling disappointed because you don't feel there's a meaningful- Never done those? I think f maybe one time. I know. I don't know. I should uh, check those out. Uh, maybe one day. Maybe people uh, where's no PvP. Maybe because I'm weak, uh, I will be able to check world bosses. Maybe. I think uh, I I I uh, encountered one, and that one was uh, in one of my videos. I don't rem remember which one. But still, I think I did. I think. Uh, I need to check that out. A lot of unanswered questions from me. ...chance to acquire gear during these events. To improve this, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to increase the number of portals that appear for peace mode bosses. Ooh. The portals will be generated so, based on... So, I was participating in that. Yeah, I don't... Mm, I don't remember what loot I've got because that was... So long time ago for me, because I have very, very bad memory. Some player counts, but on average, I would expect you to see at least one more portal per boss. This should help spread players out across more fights, giving more opportunities to acquire drops. The second thing is we are introducing a new chest drop that has a chance to be included in your participation reward after the boss dies. This chest will allow you to select one of any of the epic items the boss can drop, which we hope will also give players the agency of choosing a reward that's most relevant to them. Mm -hmm. All items from this chest will be untradeable, though the non-weapon items can be lithographed if the player chooses. Players can expect both of these changes to be live following our maintenance on October 31st. We've also been paying attention to the impact that the Eclipse skill is having on peace mode bosses occurring within Abyss Dungeons. We think that this is disrupting the expected... F I don't know a lot of stuff about this game, I think. That could be a problem doing these types of videos because I don't know what the hell he's talking about. ...flow of gameplay well, that for individuals attempting to participate in peace mode boxes, which are meant to be a PvP-free experience for those players. So we're making an adjustment bad, so that bad. when peace mode bosses spawn in... I'm not mainly PvP player. I would... Uh, I would like to participate in PvP uh, stuff uh, uh, with guild, with, with other people, but I'm not that a good a uh, player, and I like to grind PvE. So that's, in my opinion, that's a good idea that um, uh, peaceful stuff exists. I'm not against PvP stuff. Don't get me wrong. That th uh, I understand that this game... Uh, is focused on PvP. I'm not one of those that will scream that uh, they cannot participate in some stuff because it is PvP and it is gated be uh, of uh, top guilds uh, and other guilds. I'm not gonna be angry. This is PvP focused game. We have PvE content that I enjoy. So I'm not gonna be angry about that. I'm not gonna... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Dungeons? there will be an additional new portal outside the dungeon that will take players directly to the safe zone inside the dungeon. Come here, this way love. they can enter the peace mode boss as expected without passing through areas that may have turned into a conflict zone due to the eclipse skill. This change- Oh, the eclipse, you, um, hmm. So that's uh, the thing that is happening at night. I mean, uh, some of the, uh, a beetle or whatever those zones are called uh, be uh, become a PvP zones. Okay, that's at night. Mm, my bad, I'm an idiot. I will re repeat myself multiple times. I'm an idiot. 
which is expected to go live in mid-November. The Eclipse skill itself will continue to change the dungeon into conflict mode, as always. I'm not against Finally, that. For bosses, there's been talk about how contribution works in relation to the loot drops. Later this week, we will be releasing an article that defines and describes how loot distribution works across all content types. But I want to briefly touch on this specifically for Conflict World bosses. With the recent change locking boss loot to the original owner for 10 minutes, some guilds have been wondering what the value of PvP is in these events. The spirit of the Conflict World boss is that guilds are fighting to control the area to allow their guild to damage the boss and raise their contribution, thus in Area. Exactly. Not the boss itself. I mean, they will fight for uh, some of the po uh, party or guild members. Exactly. Guild members will fight uh, with other guilds and a few parties from that guild or alliance guilds will fight uh, with the boss. Increasing okay. your chances to get better loot. In if addition I understand to increasing your correctly. own contribution, though, you can also decrease other guilds' contribution. In conflict mode, you do this. I think we uh, we should have something, uh, some kind of indicator that uh, shows the contribution. Uh, exa uh, I press button and uh, some kind of tablet or or uh, some kind of text pops up and shows percentage of uh, I don't know guild party or whatever. This by killing players from rival guilds which will reduce that player's contribution by uh, 70%. Wait. You do this wait. by killing players from decrease other guilds' contribution. In conflict mode, you do this by killing players from rival guilds, which will reduce that player's contribution by 70% each death. Mm -hmm. So reducing another guild's contribution mm -hmm. increases your relative contribution. So it's a major factor in determining the loot that can drop for you. We are working on introducing some contextual UI indicators of contribution amounts, and we hope that this will help guilds be more strategic about which opponents to focus their attacks on. Moving on from world bosses, I want to talk. He's listening. I think they're listening for for uh, two players. Right now, at least, I hope. Great ideas. Some kind of indicator. Here we go. Some kind of way to understand the system. Here we go. We got that. We will get that. Talk about co-op dungeons. We have made three recent changes to matchmaking for dungeons. To help with queue experiences, we introduced a new option to queue for a random dungeon when using party matchmaking, and we made a change to better match players based on their combat power, to better align group capabilities. Oh, matchmaking sucks. Definitely. Matchmaking sucks. Their mm, party selection... Uh, mm -mm. Well, uh, at least uh, you need to get used to some of the quirks. Uh, you need to. There's no way to uh, intuit into in, uh, mm, to find that out yourself. Which way is the best way to find a party to? Uh, farm dungeons. Uh, I should try not to use hard work words. But no, that's never gonna happen. To help with completion rates, we increase the damage and HP buff when queuing through matchmaking to be 10%, up from 5%. Why exactly? All of these changes went live on October 17th. Then, oh. in order to improve the rate okay. in which players can acquire their desired gear, we made another change following the Haunted Harvest Halloween update that provides a bonus reward when queuing for random dungeons. Each successful random dungeon completion will reward one additional dimensional soul shard and will also have a chance at a larger reward of one dimensional essence. We hope that these changes have had a meaningful impact to your experience with co-op dungeons. We're gonna keep monitoring the data, we're gonna keep for listening each to player successful. feedback, and okay. we'll continue to tweak if needed. All right, let's talk now about some major systems that players may already be familiar with because of their time playing on the Korean service. In particular, I want to talk about two systems. First of all, I will say, and we have this talk with uh, other guild members, a few of them, why exactly some of the stuff in global version does not work on launch? You had fully, let's say, fully developed client 
and bug fixes throughout the year in Korean server. I think that's a year, almost a year Korean server worked. And I don't think that we should encounter uh, bugs like that, uh, which we uh, encountered in global servers. Server problems, uh, some kind of stuck problems in the, in in textures in 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 the world. Why exactly some of this stuff? I don't understand. Global version um, Amazon was uh, Koreans gave Amazon different client, a different version of the game that it it it. I don't mean the updates or something like that, but those bugs, I think, shouldn't exist in 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 a uh, server that exists for almost a year. And uh, Amazon got... I don't get it. I don't get it. Why the fuck? I understand that some of the bugs uh, were... Um, Uh, some of the bugs can occur I agree but for fuck's sakes I don't understand how uh, the game was such on launch was such a buggy mess when the game existed for a almost a year I all, I'm repeating myself I understand but I can't wrap my head around that it existed for almost a fucking year. And it, it servers were buggy mess, overloaded and 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 buggy, no connections. Uh the 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 we had problems with the transfers. We had um uh, we have people using transfers in a shitty way to get uh, a some kind of benefits somehow and did you thought mm, did developers and uh, and and uh, people who fix bugs didn't encounter those things those never thought that they will encounter those things in korean servers never happened these things that happened in global version of the game or am i dumb Ha, ha, ha. Oh, okay, I'm ranting. This was supposed to be reaction. I'm ranting. Substance transformation and the rune system. Okay. And I want to be very clear no here. Stuff. Neither of these systems will launch in our service with their current functionality. We're working closely with NCSoft to make updates, and both systems will be improved in a way that will satisfy both Korean and global users. And then launch. While not all changes are finalized, here are some things I can say for now. For the rune system, it will have at a minimum the following adjustments. First, rune slot unlocking will no longer require RNG to obtain your desired slot type. Second, we're introducing a- They're limiting RNG. I'm so fucking happy. And they, they will try to do it properly. They will launch a not working system separate rune bag with improved searching capabilities to reduce the burden on your traditional my dreaming, inventory and storage. Am I dreaming about... Mm. Am I dreaming about uh, good developers? I hope so. I, I may be a little bit too, too, too brainwashed with this thing. Maybe I'm enjoying the game too much blindly. Maybe people tell me in the comments if I'm too blind to see um, bad things that are happening with this game. Please, maybe I'm blind. I'm enjoying the game too much. Maybe I'm not understanding something. Pay to win aspects. I don't see. Uh, what the hell? I'm happy right now. At least, okay. At at, at least of what I'm hearing, storage. We will well. we will see what will happen when the system will launch in global version. But oh boy, I think we have 
Mm. Hey, we have hope at least. We have hope. They are saying correct things, in my opinion. At least, and uh, uh, if we not pay, it, if we won't pay attention in the uh, disaster of a launch, uh, the the game. Mm, 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 mm. Some people, I understand that some people remove themselves, uh, stop playing the game because of bugs on launch. But come on, guys, the game is going well. And I'm not seeing any problem with progression, with pay to win. Or am I dumb? Please explain me. I'll also make to it me. easier to find your desired rooms. For substance transformation, it will at a minimum be changed so that tradable items oh boy. cannot be used in the system. This Wait, means what? it will at a minimum be changed so that tradable items cannot be used in the system. This means you cannot infinitely buy items from the auction house to feed the system to earn rewards. Since the amount of items that can be fed may be decreased because of this, we're evaluating the requirements of how much has to be fed into the system to gain rewards. Although we don't have any specific changes related to trait resonance at this time, this system is not planned to release in the near future, and we are still actively discussing any potential adjustments for this system with NCSoft prior to its release. Right now, after this, I'm feeling like Korean servers uh, open beta testing for global version. While we're on the topic of upcoming systems, I want to talk about a growing desire from our players to have the ability to engage in more structured PvP outside of the competitive large-scale options currently available in the open world events and conquest battles. I'm happy to say this is something we've had on our radar for a while, and we're excited to bring you a new feature that will come in mid-November that will provide on-demand battle features. Holy shit! I don't want to reveal too much yet, but this will allow players to engage in non-competitive PvP across arenas and conquest battles, with varying numbers of teams and team sizes, both in public and private matches. So stay tuned for more updates about that in the coming weeks. More stuff in the There's arena. There's been so much great feedback from everyone in the community, both positive comments and suggestions for how to improve the game. Thank you. We're more weapons. Icon wants summoner class, summoner weapon. And I have few ideas how to at least Small things. Okay. I need to take care of some stuff. Where? Both positive comments and suggestions for how to improve okay. the game. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We're really grateful that you are all this invested. More weapon types. More skills. Please? Sit in helping us continue to improve the game. We're just getting started, and this week on October 31st, our first player survey will open. You will be able to access it from the Silesium notice board in game, and I want to really encourage you to take it. We take the results very seriously and real actions have spawned from all of our previous surveys. I hope so. We're always listening to your feedback, whether it's through the surveys, reading your reviews on the major gaming platforms, or comments in Discord and social media. We're always using your voice to help guide our development and using it to improve the overall Throne and Liberty experience. So please keep the feedback coming. All right, that brings us to the community question. What we'd really like to know is, what would you like to see changed in Throne and Liberty? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Please like and subscribe. That lets us know that you want more of these kinds of videos. We'll read each and every comment, so let us know what you think. More weapon types. Nobody will watch this, but still more weapon types. I want dual swords. We could have a spear, we could have... Let's see what we had in Lineage. NCSoft, listen. In Lineage, we had fists, we had axes, we have mm, uh, hammers. Uh, I, I don't get it why axes and hammers were in the same type, blunt weapons, but... Uh, nah. Dual swords, okay, blunt axes. Uh, give a weapon for I wish to see a summoner class. That's a rare class in any type of MMOs. Because I want Icon to have summoners because he likes summoners. And yeah, <laughs> what else? I should I, I I I should put a comment in the in the in the comments down below. Um, what else, what else, what else?
mm, I want to hear from people who are who will watch this video. I want to hear uh, your opinion about the game, uh, why you still play, why you quit the game. And I think that's all. What new stuff you want to see in the game. Uh, I've been Matchbox. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, or write a comment, push a like, and I hope to see you soon in the next one. I really hope this was informative. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in Silesia.